All right, welcome to the Special Committee on Diversity on Boards and Commissions, um, uh, appointed by uh, Vice Mayor Shulman. And I wanted to give a little background as to why we're having this special committee and what we've been tasked with, and what, um, and if there are any other tasks that we want to uh, consider. And I've got one idea that I'll share. But, um, so it was last year, Early last year, I passed, um, or I sponsored a bill that we passed overwhelmingly that um, that has us, uh, has the clerk's office collect demographic data um, for, uh, on our boards and commissions so we, we could see how we're doing. We were going through several um, uh, contentious or, or um, divisive, or at least divided, um, appointments to a specific, one specific board, and I just, you know, early on I felt like we needed to have good numbers, um, and so that's why I, I, we passed that, and I think that's why I've been asked to be chair, because um, uh, uh, IT in the mayor's office came to me to ask me questions about the report, so that's why you've got an old-ish white guy <laughs> as the chair of a diversity committee. Um, <laughs> So, if we, if we, and, and, and to be quite honest, uh, if we're thinking diversity, diversity wise, the diversity doesn't. We're gonna. I'm gonna talk about this. Diversity doesn't talk. We always think about the big three, right? Age, gender, race. Yeah. There's there's so much more in diversity than, than we can ever think of. So, yeah. But, so, but those are very important ones, right? <laughs> the ones that we can see. But there's more opportunities. For That's true. That's true. Uh, it was just an opportunity for a little joke and explanation. Uh, uh, although, something to consider. But um, And also, the mayor's office and the IT department have been working on redoing the, uh, the website where we capture board and commission information, applicant information. And I'm going to let uh, Slade and Mr. Jameson, um, Slade Hurd and Mike Jameson, uh, tell us about that project because it sounds really exciting. It's all you, Mike. <laughs> um, so the uh, legislation that Councilman uh, Cash and the other council members adopted uh, was last uh, adopted April 6th. Um, a couple of months before that, we had reached out to, uh, I guess originally Keith Durbin, um, to discuss the, the boards and commissions appointments process now, how it works logistically. Uh, it is a bit... Uh, uh, anodyne, and we have two printed binders in, in an office, and it is somebody's job to go through them and to figure out when a vacancy comes up and when to appoint it. Pretty archaic. So, reached out to Keith and asked, can we uh, update this process and take that opportunity to do two things. Uh, one, uh, get it out there. Uh, have a web page that lists we envisioned five columns. Uh, one, here's the name of the board or commission, and you perhaps click on it, and it explains what that board or commission does. Uh, column two would be the members uh, and their contact information, if you want to contact them. Column three would be the vacancy dates. You know, the next vacancy on this board is X. Uh, column four would be the demographics, and then column five would be an actual click on here to the application. Um, and so that's been a work in progress and then it dovetailed nicely with uh, Councilman Cash's legislation, went back and now Slate was working on it and, and made sure we are capturing in that demographics column the categories uh, suggested in, in the Council's legislation for the reports that they get from, uh, from Austin's office. So uh, that, I, I don't want to speak for Slate on how close it is to uh, completion, but I think we're pretty close. So um, where we're at is that we're at the point now where we're building the system and where we have the, the data table of all of the data that it takes to uplift into the system <clears throat> so that we can administrate and manage these using an enterprise grade application. And 
I knew a year ago that legislation was passed on reporting and part of the software life cycle is we go through and we build reports and we want to make sure that we were giving the, all the tools that um, you guys and the mayor's office need in order to develop a report and to be able to ass assess essentially the performance of your appointments and how it, it, how we're meeting and addressing with, with regards to diversity. So um, I know that there's uh, four stipulations in the um, legislation and those are um, obviously covered at already baseline. That's, that's covered in the new system. We wanted to make sure that um, we were capturing all of the information to give you a full picture of diversity with regards to appointments for boards and commissions. So this is your opportunity to bring to the table ideas and suggestions of things you want to collect. Um, if you want to reword the question that's there today to, to get more information out of the respondent or um, if you just want to put a new question on the questionnaire to get to elicit information from the respondent about um, their diverse their background and makeup. Sounds good. Uh, and so I suggested to the vice mayor when I was approached um, like that, that, that the chair of the minority caucus, the chair of the LGBTQ caucus, the chair of the um, Women's Caucus and the Chair uh, of the Rules Committee, who sees the the Board and Commission applicants, um, and uh, and and suggested some other uh, additional folks, and we have uh, Councilman Taylor with us. So, and it just made sense that we that we have um, folks that represent those those caucuses um, chime in to this. Um, so and I've given you three things. I've given you the agenda. I've given you a two-page sample of the report that was sent out in October, which has like an overall breakdown. And the, um, as Slade mentioned, it, we're, we, the legislation says that we're capturing four um, demographic categories or demographic data points. And um, there also we're, we're, it's to be, the report is to include like it, in two ways. One, kind of the overall, and second, what we've done in the, in the previous year, starting, I guess, October 1st. Um, and so this report, which I think was, gives us like a partial year and a full year. Um, I think it'll, in the future, once there's, it's cycled for a full year, uh, it will get that, we'll get one year's, like what's happened in the last year, and then the overall. And then the second report that I gave you is a longer one, and it has breakdowns of each of the boards and commissions all the way from action to zoning appeals. Um, and it's mainly, this report is mainly giving us uh, the, the racial break, breakdown, the gender breakdown, um, and it's telling, saying if there's a vacancy, it's capturing that too. And then it's giving us, um, at the like on the last page, and I think the other report did this too, the overall report, it's giving us, um, a breakdown by LGBTQ uh, members, and it, it, I mean, it's not doing it for each um, demographic, it, for each board and commission. It's just giving us an overall, and I would suspect, and uh, Mr. Kyle, you may, like, do we think as we go forward that will be captured, like, in each board and commission? Yeah, we, we, we could add that for each one. Okay. Um, so, so I wanted you to kind of see what we're getting each year, if you hadn't already, when we got it in October, um, and just maybe to have it to refresh our minds. Um, so, I want to like the I've, I've had um, I had staff uh, collect or have an opportunity to collect ideas from from council members on the committee and in a public meeting, uh, touching base on this. I've gotten a few suggestions. Um, and the five that I've gotten, there's kind of one that I've um, gotten a little additional information on, uh, is zip code um, that we that we kind of see how our board and commission members are um, how how diverse by zip code. Um, are there any that you know seem to dominate? Are there any that we're, are not represented or underrepresented? Which I think is a good thing to think about. Uh, educational level. 
income level, which I think would be um, more of a like uh, level, not right. like, hey, what's your exact <laughs> income? But, you know, and I don't know, that's one thing that we could talk about, about what those levels might be. Uh, pre, uh, previous service on a board or commission or on council. I mean, we can talk about how broad we want to go on that. Um, and then, and maybe how many years they've served on a board or commission or council. Like how many, maybe how many years have they served in an elected or appointed position in metropolitan government? Is that a way, is that a way to catch it all? Um, and then a drop down list for uh, self-identified sexual orientation should be just, is, is that the way you want it worded? Or? Um, <laughs> I, uh, um, on behalf of the uh, caucus, uh, we wanted to, to allow opportunity for people to self-identify for each of those letters, right? Okay. Um, lesbian, right. gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, um, uh, both with that and with um, all the other options that are available, the opportunity to uh, select more than one box. Um, because um, you could identify both as lesbian and queer. Um, you could identify both as African-American, lesbian, and bisexual. Um, so wanting to make sure that there's no like limit to how many boxes you may choose to check. Okay. Um, and then what, like, what do we know, is it, when they're selecting gender, is it, Binary, or is there an option for something other than male or female? Do we know? There is, a, there is, because I know <coughs> uh, one no, binary was counted, binary. so it should be there. Okay. If not, we would want to make sure that it is. Okay. Do we, and do we think that binary is the word to use there, or? I, I've uh, okay. been advised that it is, but I, I'd be more than happy to okay. make sure. <laughs> um. That works. I mean, yeah. that works for me. I don't know if there was like a because you could be a, like a way to put in a blank. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, gender and sexual orientation are two separate things. Okay. Right, right. So um, I think having um, uh, uh, trans available in both may be uh, prudent. Um, I'd have to ask some advice on that from from leaders in that community to to be clear as to what would be preferred. I was going to ask, do you want to bifurcate those, or do you want to keep it just trans? Is, I guess, the question I would have. Yeah, I, I think that if you if you under under see, because if you're if you're a trans female, you're identifying as female. Female. Yeah. Um, but, but we want to make sure that we're. I, I think I would want to seek some advice, um, particularly from from leaders in that um, community before I make a recommendation, but I do think that it's important that we figure that part out. Um, because you have the LGBTQ community, you have the T in there, and you don't want to leave out the T. Right, but at the same time, um, there may be um, additional information to where um, individuals may, may choose to identify as uh, non-binary and trans. Um, so I kind of want to get some advice on that. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, and I wanted to. That's why why I was asking um, that it, if we want to look at what what the options are in gender as well as yeah. the options in. I think the, uh, the main thing that I wanted to bring to this conversation is that there should be an opportunity to check more than one box. Okay. Does that sound doable? Slide. Yes. All right. Chair, can I ask you a procedural question? Yes. Um, so the I guess there are two formats that are going forward. There's the legislation you passed that is on the clerk's office to send a report out every October 1. Then there's the web page that the mayor's office has been working on. And are the categories being proposed for both or one? Because I thought if it's for the report, then you'll need to amend the legislation or um well, it says gender, ethnicity, LGBTQ identification. That was or disability. That's what the legislation says. Right. Just breaking apart LGBT and further uh, opening for the report from the clerk's office. Yes. 
That is, and, and the, then you have the web page that we're using to solicit public buy-in. Are we talking about doing both? Or? <coughs> this is the same thing. So we're Getting collecting the, the information off right. of the web page, and then he'll get the yeah. information and create the report out. Okay. That's what I understood. And um, I think, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, and I'll ask to be sure, but I think the legislation says these things need to be included in the report. I don't think they, it, it disallows any other categories to be in the report. But, you know, if we need legislation, um, I'm happy to do that. But I, like if we're at, if we add some new things, I mean like some of this stuff we're going to be collecting anyway, like zip yeah. code. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we're selecting edu is educational level something we typically um, ask on an application to a border commission. I know some of them it's have to have a certain sort of it's collected. It's not a structured answer as far as like there's not a checkbox mm -hmm. of I have a bachelor's degree. It is an open form text that you can write a whole story if you want to about your educational background. Gotcha. So. Okay. Um, so have I, have I, is that, is that a sufficient answer or? It is. I think we're, um, our interest is, is just getting the web page up as soon as possible. I mean, it's been a year and two months and we really, really, really need it. And so um, not having to gum it up and six weeks for an ordinance to pass is good news um, and uh, would, otherwise would you agree that with what I said that like the, there are four things that and in two different ways that we're asking for the information to be <clears throat> collected so it can be reported but that additional things can be I would think could could be included and, and asked and in the report yeah you don't think we need legislation to add things, we would need legislation to change something that we've already said, I would think. Yeah, I mean, if what, what I suspect will eventually happen is that Austin will have a web page at his disposal and not have to send out a paper report every October 1st. Mm -hmm. That's where I send it, assume it blends in. Mm -hmm. um, right. And then just getting there, again, our interest is just getting it online as soon as possible because we're, I got that. Yeah. I, w I will say, I mean, I think part of part of the legislation was meant that we are, it is meant, it's great that it'll be there all the time, but also to kind of, we, you know, as we all are, you know, we can be busy. And so at a certain point in the year to say, hey, here's an update of where we are. Like I, I would like to still get a report or even if it's a link to some a, a website, I don't remember if the legislation said a written report but you know for the clerk to say hey it's it's the beginning of October here's here's where we are on and it here's where we are on well on and, and even even more so that the, the public in general could go and say you know I'm interested in serving on the um, whatever board um, oh there's an opening oh um, they don't have any LGBT um, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, folks involved, so I, I may have a, a really good chance of getting on that, so I'm going to fill out the form. So just having that data available for the general public to be able to, to utilize as well. Um, and I think that I think that's been probably the, the number one barrier, I think, from the general public kind of knowing what board and commissions there are out there and when seats are open. I think those are probably general public questions, right? It's like, and who's involved. yeah, exactly. And then who's involved on those boards. Mm -hmm. It's not a, uh, <coughs> so many boards and commissions and it's hard to, to mm -hmm. keep up with it, but it helps us kind of dial into who is representing mm -hmm. beyond your elected officials, but your peers who are representing you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I will say I chose October because, you know, every four years they're going to, at least, they're going to be some new council members coming in and so mm -hmm. to kind of, to, to say, hey, here's something, here's information that you have access to, or here's a, re a report that, that shows this information as you consider or as you solicit folks to, to get involved in metro government. I, I do have a question about zip code. I know uh -huh. that you're getting an address anyway, but sometimes they'll provide addresses, not necessarily, sometimes it's where they work and, and not their home address. 
Um, but I also know that you, the mayor's office has been very diligent over the three mayors I've been involved with to know what district they're in. And I think that with the district lines changing, that, that could be a little more difficult than a zip code or not. I mean, to be able to kind of determine if the majority of boards and commissions are coming from certain districts that we need diversity in district rather than in zip code. Mm -hmm. um, because there, there are yeah. zip codes where there are five districts representing that zip code. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That was going to be my comment. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So the two, so you would, you both agree that rather than collecting by zip code, collecting by council district? Yeah, I think that'd be I think so. more um, I think we're already advantageous. I think you already are. Yeah. Um, but that's a, a sort of a self-identification. Like, I'm, I'm in district blank. You're not looking it up. Mm. But they're mm -hmm. identifying as being in a particular. Not if they don't know what district they're in, then that's a clue. <laughs> 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 they should. They should go and look it up. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so I think that might be. It's sort of a self-identification. Yeah. 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 That's what they're interested in. There's a tool for it. There's a step. Um, but with um, with district lines changing so dramatically next year, I think that'd be. Um, they're going to have to go back to previous. Um, people that are already on boards and commissions that have identified as being in a certain district, they may no longer be in that district. Um, so I don't know whether or not... Is, is the, um, do, you, do you send out the form to everybody once a year to kind of reinstate information? Uh, I think currently, no, that's, that's not what's happening. Because that could be, I think, an important thing to do for 23 because of the district changes and because of the updates to get a real clean slate as to everybody fill this out now. It would be good after we get this load, the data loaded mm -hmm. to, to do a, a survey out to all of the members to get their information from and recollect and then re-upload mm -hmm. it or have them recomplete the new form mm -hmm. and submit that and then the system can ingest that information in and we can have it uploaded without having to mm -hmm. hand me Can we ask, that, that, that sounds like it could be a heavy lift, that's a smart thing to do, I totally agree, that sounds like it could be a heavy lift and it sounds like it's going to fall off. Asking for it and having them do it are two different things. <laughs> well, I think, I think as a part of being on the board and commission, I don't think it's a lot to ask the board members to just update their data once a yeah. year. Yeah. So we can yeah. ask them, you know, in they have from July to August to update their information to or whatever to September whenever and then the information is compiled um, for the October report yeah. because uh, and I pulled up the legislation that's what I was doing on my phone over here I pulled up the legislation and it does ask for the current demographic composition um, juxtaposed to the prior. So I think the only way we can get current is if people update it every mm -hmm. year because something could change. People mm -hmm. could move council districts or, mm -hmm. um, I mean, that mm -hmm. their ethnicity likely wouldn't change. But, you know, there are mm -hmm. things, their socioeconomic status may change or there are things that could change from year to year. And if we want the most current information, I think it is incumbent upon us to ask that they update their information. Mm -hmm. And that could just uh, be the the goal of the uh, chair of those committees to make sure that it's... Right. Or, or we work with the staff member or the director that manages those to, to ask them to, to help us with it, yeah. generally. And we, I mean, when we, there are three questions that we ask them, which, no, that's right. by the way, <laughs> we ask, are they registered to vote? And not everyone, not every committee has to be a registered voter. But anyway, that's another, that's for another conversation. Mm -hmm. But um, one of those questions could be, are you willing to update your data on a yearly basis? You know, and then that way this person is coming into this knowing that this is an expectation. Mm -hmm. And then we can work with the chair of each board to make sure that they know that their board members need to make sure that they're, up, uh, updating their information on a yearly basis. Is that are no. those questions based on rule? Or? Is that automatically populated? Will that can can we have the questionnaire? Mm. But what I'm trying to avoid is I know it sounds easy. You got 70 boards and commissions, probably 800 individual members, and right. when you say compile, who's going to compile that? And it's going to be Austin, <laughs> and that's 
But if it's uh, if you have a brand new questionnaire that feeds the web page category, yes, that's what yes. I'm saying. That's exactly, right. exactly. Are so we that there it's yet? auto populated, are so we, that so Austin is not having to input all of this. But are we there yet? Is there a is, it, is that? That's where we're going. Right? I mean, who's that for? <laughs> I, I think is I'm looking Austin at or Austin. Slade, Slade. Okay. Slade. <laughs> Slade, are we there yet? <laughs> I think that um, we, I think we could come up with something that would allow us to be able to collect information and not ask people to refill out their mm. life history and just yes. get them to update their information. Well, I, mm -hmm. we can take a look and report back to you guys on that. And, and I don't think that they would need to redo the full questionnaire, but just right. the, the ones that we're capturing. So if we're right. saying that we're capturing, you know, eight items, then they would just update those eight items. I mean, you can do that in like five minutes. But if we have something that would auto-populate. I think we could take a look at something. Yeah. And, and deduping and yeah. removing duplicates, et cetera. I think that, that that's a slave kind of thing. But yeah, we'll, we'll we want to make sure that we're not populating duplicate data. As soon as I come up with a tool or the, sol the solution, I'd be able to speak on it. But I need to. I, I think it's doable. But I need great. to talk with Keith and the team to see what tools we have. I think a a, a visualization of of goals uh, would be something that the mayor's office as well as the council would be interested in as well. So, if we have 800 people serving, you know what you know, the basic Davidson County demographics, what. How, how close are we to meeting a proper representation in each of those categories? Do you have um, that proper representation defined yet? Well, I mean, I think that that's um, based on the census data of, like, Davidson County population is X percent African American, X percent. I think we're, it's at, um, estimated to be six, between 6 and 9 percent mm -hmm. LGBT. So, so if, if that's the case, even on the low side of 6% of 700,000 people are being represented, um, that's a large number of individuals. But if that's 800 people, I don't know, do the math. Um, you know, we only have nine. So that, so that kind of shows you that, well, here's the goal. Where are we now? Um, and how are we meeting each of those? I think that once the data is in, it can be visualized, and uh, I think that the visualization is a motivation for it can't be underestimated. Right. All right. Um, so we're 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 saying council district um, and not doing zip code. Is the suggestion I'm getting? You sound good with that. Well, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna I mean, we'll get it. their zip code. We'll receive it. Yeah. 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 I do have a, a question. So these aren't. So legally, you, you don't have to answer these correctly. Correct. Right. It's self. Correct. <coughs> it's all self-reporting. Okay. Self-identifying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to. I think you probably have to give your address and. Right. I would assume that you have to, I mean, you have to say you're a registered voter in many of the committees, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you're, I think you're, I, I think that's correct, that you don't have to answer them. Um, and so educational level and income level, what do we think drop-down menus like that? I know we're trying to coordinate as much as possible with, uh, like, the way that census data is collected and reported. Um, but I don't know, I don't think, there's a, like an income level drop down. Is there? It's just a. There are, there are um, categories, Ranges. brackets, Ranges. <coughs> ranges, thank you. In the, in, in ranges. the census data? Yeah. All right, yeah. I, I'm happy. Are, we, are you guys comfortable stipulating that we look to the census questionnaire for kind of our the, the benchmark for questions to be created for this? Or. Um, <coughs> Generally, I would say, I mean, it's kind of the <laughs> standard when you get into um, social research and, and surveying that um, we, it's our benchmark um, mm -hmm. in that regard. So I, would. I think that's fair. I, like, I maybe if I looked at every single census designation, I could find something to quibble with, but sure. But for the sake of giving you a stand, kind of a standard, here's, you know emulate this or, or use this drop down so for educational level and income level I'm, I'm happy for for that it's just it's keeping in mind that this census questionnaire changes at the whim of mm -hmm. federal yeah so yeah sometimes 
things are taken out. Wrong. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I, um, I think that we can, we'll, um, we'll be able to get what we need off of just a, at a general level of it. Maybe as a starting point and bring it back to the committee yeah. and then we could discuss. Certainly, certainly. All right, and then previous service on boards and commissions. Oh, uh, chair. For, yeah, I'm sorry, before we go, before we pass, like, income level. Yep. Um, so we did have a conversation at the Minority Caucus meeting about some of the uh, recommendations that we wanted to see. Um, yeah. Would you like me to share all of those now, or would you like me to share them as they come up? Um, you're, it's your Okay. Okay. Um, so we did... Some of these have already been listed. How many boards and commissions have they been on previously and for how long? Uh, zip codes or council districts. Uh, we also discussed age so that we can look and see if there's, you know, we don't want ageism to be a play. Um, ethnicity, race, uh, gender, orientation, of course, self-identified. Um, and then for socioeconomic status, we did discuss like a, a salary range. And the thought about that was like looking at when we're thinking about diversity, um, making sure that we're also having representation of like working class individuals that are serving on these boards and commissions. I think that um, we have to be careful with our wording um, when we're asking for this information, whether that is asking people to self-identify um, as LGBTQIA plus or a socioeconomic status or education status. We don't want people to think that we're collecting this to not include them, right? So we don't want people to think, oh, let me say that I'm making 70,000 because if I say I make 20,000, they won't put me on the board. Or let me say this because if, I, if they know I only have a high school diploma, maybe I won't get the opportunity to serve. So I think that we just want to be very mindful um, to ensure that the language is inclusive and that um, we are making it intentional that we are seeking out diversity or um, just however we want to work that. Okay, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it, 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 some kind of a, a, a statement like an EEOC statement that, uh, you know, that, that indicates that we want a broad diversity of different kind of Nashvilleans um, not just by the you know, main categories that we have, well, have already yeah. requested be included. Um, I so, so, I mean, that's kind of how, I don't know what it says, but what... I was involved in the um, um, non-discrimination ordinance that was finally passed, um, which was uh, took an, an enormous amount of time. Um, but uh, in inclusion on the website and in our documentation for jobs, um, it, it has a, a pretty inclusive uh, group uh, in regard to non-discrimination policy as a metro government, which ha was a matter of ordinance. And so using that on, on this site as well as an underlining thing. But I also believe that the, the goal setting, the visualization of the goal setting does that too. So it's like, oh, they are looking for this. Um, I think could help quite a bit. Um, help us, that language, right? Uh, particularly coming from the mayor's office, when it's like, help us reach our goal. We're looking for um, that kind of thing. So um, that might help quite a bit, kind of, kind of knowing what that goal is, right? It's like, what, what percentage of Nashvilleans uh, are making less than thirty thousand dollars a year, and how are they being represented on on our boards and commissions? Right. So, uh, what knowing those numbers is uh, something that, that we all need to be mindful of. But I don't know whether or not it can be yeah. captured um, all at once or not. I don't know. But all of it should be available from the census data. I mean, there's going to have to be language as, like, I guess, are we talking about when it's captured, when they're, when an applicant or, or somebody that's on the, has been appointed and approved for the board and commission is providing us their information? Is that when we want it? Or, or are you talking about on the report? I would think it would be when we're, when they're, because Council yeah, Porterfield was talking about, applying. like, applying, yeah. When they're applying, as yeah, opposed to... Yeah, I think to that makes sense. So, I mean, it would just kind of be something, as they started 
entering their data um, that we said something like we're looking for all kinds of folks. So and So I'm kind of familiar um, with some um, forms that I fill out where it'll, like government forms, they'll say U.S. law, you know, states we can't. I'm really just reaching for straws mm -hmm. here, but, you know, this is, uh, like you said, it'll st cite the statute or cite some, like some kind of legislation, and then it, that kind of explains why we're asking the questions that we're asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that what you're, yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 Kind of. Okay. So um, one, one piece of, one thing to clarify, because it, in the analysis it says current, but if you, I just went back up to the text um, of the actual legislation, and it does specifically say um, the, the status is as disclosed on the questionnaire submitted to the Metro clerk at the time of confirmation. So the legislation is looking at what did they actually fill out at the time that they were confirmed. So I do think it would be helpful if that information is like updated yearly, if we're able to do it in a simple way. But for the purposes of the legislation, it, it is specifically <coughs> asking for at the time of confirmation. And I think that that's important to point out is that when you're wanting to build your objectives um, for your reporting, that, um, like that stated, it that was all the information collected. If we start meshing it, then you're skewing your data because yeah. you yeah. things yep. change. And so I'm only I need to get a snapshot at the beginning, yep. and then we can do another a different survey. I'm thinking for those. Yeah, and also if. If we're looking at confirmation, that does help us to see um, patterns within administrations. If, like, if an administration is um, truly seeking diversity in their candidates, as opposed to looking at it on a yearly basis, that may not show if that's showing like what we have right now, but that doesn't show like if this particular administration um, is choosing diversity in their candidacy. Right. Well, that's why that. that's why I got the that's why the report is also supposed to give us the last 12 months. Yeah. Like or since the last report. That's that's where we get that. Right. Yeah. So so we're looking at a report that's going to tell us in the last 12 months who's new and as well as a report. So there, is it two reports? So is it who's new? Well, it's one report, but it's got two different data points. Like I think we come to a point where we've acknowledged that we have two different reports now. And so, yeah. because you want to report on your confirmation level, the, the data collected at the confirmation, you've had other conversa an, another conversation going at the same time about a survey that we're re-updating our information each year, which that would not be reflective of your confirmations. That's mm -hmm. gonna be just reflective of the population in a current snapshot, right. okay. so that's that one. That report, I think, would need to be figured out or delved into as far as because I don't see that it's the same with this legislation. Agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's and part of it's not just about the administration, but also who we're confirming. who we're confirming to. And I guess that's why that language was used. I don't know if I chose the word confirmation or if it was staff but well we're confirming based on recommendations from the administration yeah, yeah, yeah. right yeah. <laughs> but we're but we but we have a role in but it we too. have there's, right there's we some, can vote them up or down there's some culpability right. on our part to to make sure that we're paying attention to the, the kinds of nashvillians that, that you know that, that we are um that we're also on board with confirming a a um Diverse board. National slave, I agree. Diverse board, national slave. I agree. Well, and a, a good council <laughs> is is submitting uh, good applicants to the mayor's office for consideration. Right. Right. I agree. Right. Um, and, and not just waiting for them to figure it out. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. I agree. All right. So, um, we, have you, had you shared your the list you brought? Uh, yes. And uh, again, some of these are are already. On here, I know that uh, Councilmember Sepulveda and I uh, mentioned some of these to you previously um, yesterday. <laughs> right. uh, so I know some of these were already captured on here, but yes, that's the totality of the list. Okay, so let's figure out what we um, uh, 
three of you gentlemen, what like what do you think? What do we for you all to move forward? What do we still have left to decide or communicate to you, especially looking at this list? And did you all get the agenda? Yes. Okay. I meant them. No. I, no. I, I didn't. Did not get it. There. I think it's. Here's one right here. here. Yeah. Um, and so just and so just looking at the bullet list that's kind of in the middle are the things that I um, that I had gotten from others um, and uh, Council Member Porterfield did say age as well. Add that to my bullet list, and that should be fairly easy, right? That's mm -hmm. probably something we collect anyway, or do we not? Do you know? Sure, we probably get data bars, which would then generate age. Yeah. I'm trying to get to the form. Yeah, I don't believe that's on the current no, questionnaire. It is. Data birth isn't. It's in the database either. No. So, do they have to be 18 to serve? <laughs> they have to be registered voter. Yeah, you that's have to. That's most register. of them. Well, we, yeah, we ask if they are registered voter, that's true. Yeah. So that's going to, yeah. Uh, is there? So let me go back to so my... So they don't have to be? Do they... Which one? Do they have to be a registered voter? 18. Oh, do they have to be 18? Well, it depends, well, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I know that there are certain boards in which you have to be a registered voter. And are those the boards that are created by the state or the, the ones created by the state? You have to be a registered voter. If it's not created by the state and it's created by Metro, you do not have to be a registered voter because we were having a conversation about if we even need to ask that question for the boards in which it's not necess necessary because it could be... Um, And, and for just for anyone who has who's not registered to vote, like someone or who was a, a citizen who's re-entered, right. um, if you're not registered to vote and you're coming in and they're asking, are you registered to vote? If you say no, mm -hmm. then the assumption is that you have to be registered to vote. So either you're not applying or the council may potentially vote you down because you're not registered to vote, when in actuality you didn't have to be registered to vote. Right. So we were having a conversation about possibly even removing that, that question, question when it's not necessary. So so this and this brings up even more clarity, I mean, deeper in boards and commissions. Does each board and commission have a, a position description and or... So the when, description of what the of, board of what the, of, So of what the board is, what you... We we I think we have a position description of what the board is and and what this board does, but what is the the data or what what are the qualifications for this for this board as a member that, or as a uh, as a resident that's trying Almost to be like a, part a job of this. description sort exactly of. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Which just just gives us qualifications so so you 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 won't lean one way or the other so if you don't need to be because this has happened right. Um, you don't need to be, um, you, you know, you don't need to be have voter's registration, um, or if you can be a returning citizen and a convicted felon, uh, <coughs> but it doesn't, you know. But we ask that question, and you say yes or no, um, but it really doesn't matter anyhow. Uh, but then on the background, we we've asked that question, and you've answered it incorrectly, and now we're asking you to leave the board, not because of the truth, but because you've answered incorrectly. So we do have the ability in the system to, based on my, my go-to um, example is the um, building mechanic um, examiner's board. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you have to be a licensed examiner. You have to have a license. Right. And so um, I'm not going to, if you're going to join the community oversight board, you're not going to be asked if you have a building mechanic's license, right? right? right. <laughs> so um, the, we can, we can, um, Ask uh, a required question. That you have to you have to answer yes or no, or uh, are you a registered voter? For those boards or commissions that require it, mm -hmm. and then ones that do not, we don't have to ask that question if it's not desired. And that was just an example that, um, technically speaking, you have that ability to yeah, customize. Yeah, you can, for you can each. toggle that so on each. depending on what yeah, form so they're filling out. What I would do is I would sit down with a list of all of the boards and commissions with all of the requirements. minimum requirements to be on the board or commission. 
and that's how we build the logic for the form for the specific questions um, based off of those requirements. Yeah. So circling back, so one, I think the biggest thing is determining which ones are required, which ones are state and which ones aren't. Which yes. I don't know. Is there a list of that? I think we do. You do yeah, have a list. Yeah. So then the question would be, if it's not through the state, and therefore you do not have to be a registered voter, do you have to be 18 to serve on the border commission? No, the charter has a really broad border commission uh, section, um, and it essentially the way the charter has it is the mayor just appoints them, hmm. and then there's a sentence. Uh, except for any conditions that are added specific to the Border Commission later in the code. Okay. So most of the other <clears throat> boards and commissions are the subject of a specific section in the code that says uh, the Gas and Mechanical Examiner's Board shall consist of members that have the following qualifications. That's right. most of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and very few of them, if any, set any age limit, and the charter does not set one. And so then you revert back to those that are um, uh, state created that have the registration requirement, which would be by definition 18. So, uh, I think the short answer to your question is very few boards or commissions have an age requirement. Okay. Has the mayor has the mayor appointed any teen, any under eighteen? <laughs> Probably not. And then we got two school board members that are non-voting school board members that are. Uh, I mean, that's that's what I was thinking. I mean, that could be something in the future to look at non-voting members that are youth. I think that could be a good uh, yeah, asset for the future. You said what? I was one of those. Yeah. Look at you. Look at you, smarty pants, changing the world. <laughs> okay, so I want to make sure we're, we're moving towards clarity on the things that we can provide clarity on. So we want, the, the, we want to ask, we want to make sure we're asking council district, educational level, Income level, or yeah, income levels or socio, yeah, I think that's more clear. And, and with income level, we're happy using the census, range. what the census range provides. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to education level for a minute. I don't know, I like, hopefully there's some kind of um, trade certification or something in there that. Probably high school diploma slash GED. Yeah, uh, some, some college, college. college. Yeah. college. Yeah. I'm actually, I've got the, the census questionnaire pulled up and I was trying to get education. <laughs> Hopefully there's some kind of like, you know, job it's, training. It's more and more folks are getting multiple certificates. Yeah. That so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess certifi certified on, in some sort of training. Mm -hmm. Vocational certification. I don't know. Um. Previous service on boards and commissions, and how long? And the thought with that, if, Chair, if I may just add a, a little bit, I think that there's like a benefit if someone uh, has served on boards and commissions and they have like this institutional knowledge, there's definitely um, <coughs> a benefit that they can bring to that board and commission. But we also want to make sure that, that uh, individuals get uh, opportunities to serve and that new individuals get the opportunities yeah. to serve. And um, what we had seen historically, um, like prior to us being on council, um, like back in the day, uh, you saw the same people being recycled through um, boards and commissions. So it was, um, I, I've spoken to older members of the minority caucus that served previously. And uh, one thing that would happen is um, you know, if an administration was looking to put a black person on a board or commission, there were certain ones, okay, after you served on this one, now you're on this one, now you're on this one, right. and you're just kind of circulating through. Right. And we want to give, um, you know, like we want people to be like meshed with their areas of expertise, and we also want to give like people, new people, like the opportunities to serve. So like yeah. we don't want to penalize someone that served, um, especially when you're looking at like specific like skill sets, like the, mm -hmm. there's like a historical commission, right? And you think about somebody like a David Ewing, who was like the natural historian, mm -hmm. um, you don't want to penalize him because he served on the board of commission, mm -hmm. but you also don't want um, a situation where one person holds, um, you know, this seed for however, 12 years or whatever, or right. they've been on 10 different boards and they just keep getting rotated through and no one else gets the opportunity right. to serve. Exactly. I mean, that's the heart of affirmative action, affirmative action is that we 
we are reaching out to folks that aren't necessarily, you know, as well connected <coughs> as others. And, and it, it, even within, like, like you said, even within um, other, other demographic categories or other, you know, that, that we're bringing new people in, new, voice, new voices, right? All right, um, and then, um, and then the drop-down list for self-identified sexual orientation. Yeah, the L, the G, the B, and the T, and the Q, with the ability to check more than one, and on gender, to include uh, male, female, and non-binary, and we'll we'll communicate uh, to the trans community, particularly all, Marissa Richmond. I'll ask her. If, she feels as though it's necessary to also include uh, T on gender. I don't think so, but I want to make sure. Hmm. And then also, if you could, if you don't mind asking, should the, <coughs> should the non-binary option be non-binary slash gender fluid, or is is non-binary sufficient enough to to capture? I I I've been told that non-binary is is fine in, in okay. this in this because you'll end up with the alphabet soup. Before long, I, I I think that um, based on what I've heard, that this is a uh, this is uh, specifically what some other peer cities are doing, and so I think that it's it's important for us to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So earlier you had said you kind of wanted to uh, have yeah. a more conversation about it, or I just didn't know whether or not on um, on uh, on gender identity, we, we know what we want on sexual orientation. But on gender identity, whether or not the trans community would also like to identify um, in that category okay. in addition to the other. I, I just I need to confirm with that. Okay. And so are we comfortable, other committee members, that Council Member Van Rees, like she, like she can, rather than have to come back to all of us, that, that we trust her to communicate to, to Slade? Slade. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And just all, right. all right. And then age. Do we decide we do want age on there? I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I asked his date of birth because that sometimes yeah. sounds a little more polite. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but knowing that we want to see that there's not that there that there's that there's diversity yeah, in yeah. I mean, the age groups. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. I mean, I think that if you because you don't have to you don't have to answer. Mm -hmm. I think I think it would be good question though if it is since we're trying to make this like the least amount of work on Austin and Slade mm -hmm. as possible if it, just in my mind if you if you do date of birth is there something that is then going to calculate their age and and populate it in some manner or do we want to just have a drop down similar to education and um, mm -hmm. income level do you just want to have a drop down of you know, 18 oh, right. to 25, 25 to 35, 35 to 45, whatever. So we're still like capturing um, the data as far as the ages, but then they're not having to do any like computations from the date of birth. That's a very good suggestion, I think. Yeah, that, I Particularly most suggest. of these boards, they, they, aren't they anywhere from six to eight years? And some, some of them are four years long, your term. What is it on average, which yeah, are confirmed? We have some that are five. Yeah. Uh, some that are seven and eight. Is that right? Sorry, I'm just going to come through my head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So ca that capturing that um, that range, so that whenever it's updated, you'll know whether or not it, we popped over. Yep. I mean, I <clears throat> I think it's a good idea. Um, where do you want to draw the line with each range on the ages, um, and what does that? Eighteen to twenty-four. Who does that represent, or what, how do you how do you want to break that down? How does the census does the census have a breakdown? They don't break that down. They get your age. Well, um, um, uh, under eighteen, eighteen to eighteen to twenty-four. I would think. Eighteen twenty-four and twenty-five 30, to thirty-four. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think they capture ten years typically. Most surveys get 10 years. And then, you, and then um, once you get to, I mean, when when we get to 60, do we want to do 60 plus or do we want to do a 60 to 70? Like what? Because um, we could go all the way to 100. I think know, that, yeah, no, I think you can get up to uh, 65. Uh, 60. over over 75 plus. 75, 75 plus. plus. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that fair. Help us. 
70. So we have some octarians that are serving now. Okay, what do you? What else is is that? Other than uh, Councilmember Van Rees clarifying one thing to you, this do you think great. you've got? We've answered the questions. I mean, it's not legis pending legislation, so I don't think we need yeah. to take a vote if we feel like we've reached consensus. Yeah, right? no, I think we're good. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what we'll do is I'll get this together, and at some point I'll um, let y'all know Can that I've got it. something to show you, and we'll convene and just kind of make sure that this. It's what you want and what you like, and then we'll go from there. Okay. How do you feel? Uh, I'm, I'm good with the suggestions so far. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Jameson, you feel good? All right, I want to bring up one more thing, if I may. Yeah. Um, so, like, this is a special committee. I think we've taken care of what we were tasked to take care of. I guess my mm -hmm. only question is, or slight, it's, it's question slash concern is, like, we're getting this report and um, and we'll have access to uh, you know new and improved website which is great but do we do we feel like council is paying enough attention to like like we got this in late September I think like I guess I guess what I'm getting at is do we want to make sure that there are conversations taking place after we get this report so that there's some kind of you know active discussion of how are we doing uh, you know, um, well, the um, uh, the tr the rules committee chair uh, could be encouraged by the vice mayor to report quarterly. Uh, fair enough. You know. Uh, yeah. Well, not only report it, but kind of discuss. <laughs> yeah, discuss hey, it. Hey, how because, we doing? I mean, I would think that the caucuses uh, could also do the same thing. Like, hey, let's look at this. How are we doing? Yeah, because I know that, that that we are, and I and I, I think that the, the frustrating thing for for the information that that we received was like, okay, there's nine. Where 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 are they? Yes. What where are they? What commission? I know, I know where sure. three of them are. I'm like, oh, who are those other six? So we've been going through with every time we get one of those. You know, reports that is the form that they fill out for yeah. confirmation. Um, you know, we're like scanning that one thing to see whether or not they self-identified or not. It's like anybody know this person, and so it's just like, for goodness' sake, you know, it shouldn't be like trying to find Waldo. You know. <laughs> so I have a, I have a, a question, um, respectfully, and I hope I don't misspeak or speak out of turn with this in any way. My my thought with identifying with LGBTQ, um, what if people don't want to identify? You know, like, we don't want to... the box. Yeah, yeah, like, not want... I guess, like, not wanting to out someone who doesn't want to identify. Yeah. If, so, they're not, if they're not... If they don't have to check the box. When they check the... They're, they're filling out a government form. If they check the box, they're, they're out. So then, should... <laughs> so then, if they are checking the form, should it then be tied to one of the boards. So for example, Action Commission, we can see African American, white, Asian, male, female, vacant. So if they actually are checking the box and are choosing to identify, should that then be tied to whichever commission or board I think, that they're serving on? Yeah, I'd like to see it by by commission or board, but not by individual. So it's like uh, well, there's nine yeah, of yeah. you and one of you yeah. identified as Gay, then I don't have to know which one. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, right. And that might be if we that wording for right. before they start submitting their how much they make and stuff like that. Maybe that's part of that statement that like this is this is information that's collect like like all these re we're not thinking that this like when they put this stuff in that's going to be the report that goes to the rules committee or the the or are we? Yeah. Yeah, that's their application. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's what the application that we get now. I mean, so it's already, I mean, yeah. like these nine individuals chose to be public about right. it. So that's what, right. but I, you know, I, I think that proactively removing that shame is important. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we, we are looking for you to self-identify. You are valued and we need you to step up. Mm -hmm. um, so I, um, if you're not in that place and still want to serve, then just don't check the box. Right. So... My question is, is I don't want to walk out without us understanding this statement that we talked about a minute ago and I've given an, out, an, an example to. Can somebody point me in the direction of something in the charter or something that 
can give me guidance, that can guide me to create that statement to put above this information so that people... It's our, our non-discrimination um, policy. It's already on the website. Okay, I got you. And I guess what Councilman Porterfield was getting at when she, I think it was, so we talked to talking about that when you, we were talking about the income levels um, and wanting them to, to let, wanting them to know that this wasn't going to be Confidential. You, it, well, and it wasn't going to be used to um, discriminate, discriminate, or, discriminate or, 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 or look down on anybody. Yeah. That that it was like we want something just that says we want a variety of people, both in you know in kind of a number of these areas and yeah. and yeah. we we welcome diverse candidates. Yeah, I mean mm -hmm. I mean I can help work something. That's, that's a great. We welcome we welcome yeah. diverse candidates. Yeah. yeah, I just wrote one of these last week for a business. Did you? So yeah. what about um, <laughs> give it to Tom? So if we're thinking about like income level, that's one that we had some conversation around. Like we we want to see it because we want to make sure that there's like diversity there and that there's a representation of like working class individuals. Um, but then there's also the thought of um, you know, I may not want the public to know that I'm making, um, you know, 70000 or 100000 or 30000 or whatever the right. case may be. So does that have to be, <coughs> is there a way for us to, like, capture that data for the sake of the report, but not necessarily, do we want that to be disclosed? Do we want that to be public? basically. Mm -hmm. um, so our thought was that if you make the salary ranges like broad enough, like maybe it's not by 10,000, you know, 30 to 40,000, maybe that's a, a broader, a broader window, you know, 30 to 50,000 or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. so that um, we're mm -hmm. still capturing what we're trying to capture mm -hmm. without um, shaming or embarrassing people. Mm -hmm. That was just a thought. So that I don't know how... If we no, I mean that. Think uh, that. Um, well, I'm, it, I mean the AMI is fluctuating quite a bit right now, but I mean you could um, base the salary range on on 60, 80, 100, and one hundred and twenty percent AMI. Um, that's one way to do it, but but those numbers are going to change, and he's got to like yeah, keep stay consistent. So. Um, I, I think a, I think a range. One of the things that that we've already that we notice is that people pick and choose the information they want to share. Yeah, sure. And so, um, so so people are going to come into this, I believe, knowing the information that they feel comfortable to share yeah. with with us or, or not. And so, um, and, and just get, and and then also just kind of you know respecting their their thought process and their privacy if they want to keep it private. Um, but people are coming into this in a, in a, in a way of I'm, I'm willing to share or I want to get on or, um, and, and I think that there has been an opportunity for the, the public to see that <coughs> is very serious about, and specifically, you know, an administration that we're serious about a diverse candidacy for boards and commissions that represent this city. Um, as a whole, and so we, we, you know, we had our I think social services sent their information out um, last week or last couple of weeks and this week um, in regards to what our districts looks like, what what our city looks like, and so you know, as we start to kind of build a, a framework of what this looks like, um, um, I think it's in, uh, it incumbent upon us. I think Councilmember Van Reese mentioned it earlier is it's incumbent upon us as council members to start to recruit these people as well um, based on how we want the the boards and commissions to flesh out in regards to diversity uh, and in regards to the makeup of the city. Mm -hmm. And so people are going to answer these things to the best of their ability. Uh, and so as, and, and I think trying to curate something <coughs> that can get confusing that, you know, I think... The KISS met method, keep it simple, stupid, right? So, yeah. just really, you know, so, because a lot of times we want to curate things specifically around diversity that, uh, and we want to make it perfect. Um, but the opportunity that we have is just trying to keep it as simple as possible um, and then inviting people to be a part of it 
I think is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then this lets us know once we start having people <coughs> complete these forms, it lets us know who we need mm -hmm. to start inviting more. Yeah. Oh, and also, will 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 we be able to see applicants? Like, for example, if we're putting on there, you know, here are people in uh, District 18 that are interested in serving. Um, is that something we can see so we that we know who in our district is interested? Or is it just like when somebody says, yes, we want you to serve on this, fill this out? No, so we can, so we, we have a, a kind of an open solicitation, I guess, where if you just wake up one morning and you decide you want to serve on a board, you'll be able to go online and put your information in in the hopper. And then when the mayor goes through or the council goes through, says I need to fill this seat um, and you know they can see that Nancy citizen mm -hmm. uh, went in and did this and she has an interest in this mm -hmm. we're not we think she likes this mm -hmm. it's we know she's interested in her she's not right so. well and I would you know and, and, and I would in, encourage um, Mike to make sure that the, the mayor's office knows that the, the council wants to be proactive so if, if if you know that some seats are coming up or someone's working on fulfilling these seats, that you reach out to council members and say, do you know somebody we should be talking to? Can you help them make sure and apply so that it's not, we're sort of waiting for you to do it and the mayor's office is busy and not been able to do it. So it's like uh, kind of keeping those communication lines open can be extremely helpful in the long run of, of getting qualified candidates. And so um, uh, I know that uh, there's uh, individuals now that are thinking about participating that aren't quite sure how to do that and then I've been trying to kind of get through the system and so I think the website's going to be really helpful yeah. Um, yeah. in doing that but but to work uh, collaboratively on it because I know it's it's a it's a responsibility of the mayor's office to appoint and for us to review and confirm but at the same time I think it would be fantastic to see this mayor's office make that a, more of a two-way street that, that we've been trying to do all along, but uh, it's incumbent on, on us as council members to provide qualified candidates as well if, if we're wanting to have them. Two things. I, I would, wanted to thank you for that comment and, and just repeat our mantra is that, that is, uh, we are always anxious for recommendations. Um, uh, I will never forget Council Lady Sepulveda just handed us an Excel spreadsheet of here, here are qualified Hispanic candidates that would do virtually anything. That was a godsend for us just to have a, a, a reference sheet. The other thing I just want to assure uh, the members of is that this started in the mayor's office as an effort to really organize our diversification efforts and that's that's the ultimate objective of all of this, is to, to diversify the boards and commissions and make sure it reflects the city. Um, and I'm just uh, pleased as punch to say a couple of things that um, you'll see in, the, in comparison, comparing the last two reports, um, <coughs> the percentage of African American appointments to boards and commissions has increased 30% under this administration. Yep. Also, this administration inherited a staff that was 72% white. They were now at 55%. Uh, it's important to the mayor. He's made it clear that he wants it a little bit more organized, public, and transparent, but he's, he's made progress and wants you to know how important it is that he maintains that progress with your help. That's great. Uh, yeah, I think it's important to us, too. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Two really quick things. Um, one, I just want to make sure we didn't miss something. And then two, uh, to your point about like how we revisit this data. So just as a, a really like quick like glance, not even a deep dive, but like the employee benefit board, 70% white, 10% um, African American, the fair commission board, 60% white, 20% Jewish. There's no Hispanic or African American representation there. Uh, fire and building codes. Um, there's 22% unknown. Um, but there's no, you know, African or uh, Hispanic, Latino representation there. Housing trust funds, 71% white, 29% unknown, unavailable. So to your point about what are we going to do with this data, right? right? Like, I think us as a council, like, how do we definitely, like, partnering with the mayor's office to make sure that there are, like, quality candidates that they can choose from, but also 
you know, looking at the data to say, like, when that next fair board, for example, because that's been a source of contention, when that next fair board appointment comes up, yeah. this needs to be a, a, a candidate that is adding to the diversity of the board and making sure that we are looking at each of these boards and commissions to ensure diversity on them. So, like, we, this can't be a report that just, like, sits on our desk for from year to year. Right. Like, we need to actively engage with this data in a meaningful way. I um, so I, I don't know exactly what that process looks like because I know council members are completely overwhelmed and when those, uh, when it comes to those confirmations, I mean, are we, is it realistic to think that we're going to look at everyone and say, oh, did they check the box? I don't, I don't think that that's um, realistic or beneficial, but we have to find a way to actively like use this data. Agreed. And I think that, I'm sorry, go ahead. No. In reference to that, I think the intentionality behind this this meeting and this and this this committee um, leads to that. I think that that's where the starting point is, um, and I think I think that we provide opportunities such as um, you know if if there is a board of commission that has a requirement for a certification or or or, or something um, educational that you know we understand the organizations that have people that do that. Mm -hmm. um, are there diversity organizations uh, that that have diversity? If it's an engineer, you know, it's a you got black engineering organizations, or, et cetera. So understanding and, and being intentional around right. having a platform of, of if we're going to be diverse, are we going to the same well over and over again to Absolutely. have seventy percent white right. and eleven percent Jewish, <laughs> or if we are going to be diverse, are we looking at different organizations and have an intentionality to say, okay, we have connections or, or relationships with individuals in certain organizations, certain areas, certain schools, whatever, um, of people that will be very qualified that may bring a different view or, or, or thought process to this board of commission. So thinking through in that term, as opposed to just kind of hopefully somebody brings up, I think we, we it's our job and, and the administration's job to be out front with intentional steps to say, okay, this is, these are the areas that we're looking for to grow in certain areas, these are the numbers. Yeah. Um, so how do we find those people? Yeah. But, and I think, this is a, I think this is a good intentional step, first step, um, yeah. as we move forward. And the thing is, is you know, usually in most of our committees, you, we are structured where we're, we're moving legislation yeah. through, and the committees are, are, are the work around that, moving that legislation through. And we, the, the nice thing about this is we've had a great conversation and, and talked about a number of things, and it wasn't just tied to we got to we got to take this motion and move it through. So, and I and I believe that the caucuses um, mm -hmm. are able to do that too. So mm -hmm. that you know, kind of either asking by the vice mayor to let us, you know, have a committee like this to meet once a year after the report comes out, I think is good, or just kind of some um, intentional mm -hmm. way of making sure that the that the Caucus. Yeah, I would uh, encourage um, at, um, our at-large members to, to <coughs> really look at their opportunity uh, representing the entire county to, to pay attention to what's happening um, on boards and commissions in particular. Um, and I'd, I'd be challenging folks in the upcoming election to make sure that at-large members are paying attention to this yep. um, mm -hmm. because we all know that District seats can get very uh, uh, noisy, um, so mm -hmm. would hope that. And I know that the intention of our current at-large members would be all in on this, and yeah. so challenging them to participate would be good. Uh, and then my, my last comment was just to make sure that we have it all. So the, what we're the suggestions or what we're asking for are race, ethnicity, gender, LGBTQ status, disability. Um, age, um, previously, whether they previously served on boards or commissions or the council, and for how long, income level, education, and council district. Yep. Those are all the... Is that what you've captured? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.